All right, friends. Hey there. Welcome back to the podcast. This is podcast episode 140, where I'm going to try hard not to offend somebody by the name. We're going to talk today about keeping things simple. So I named this podcast Kiss. Have you guys, it's kind of like sealed with a kiss. Like remember when you did that when you were in junior high? SWAT, sealed with a kiss. Well, does everybody know what Kiss stands for? It stands for keep it simple, stupid. So Listen, I'm not calling any of you stupid, but it is an attention grabber. And this is one of Mr. Magic's favorite things to say to me, or not favorite things, but he, he'll he often be like, keep it simple, stupid. And so please hear my heart. I'm not calling anybody stupid when I talk in this podcast, but I am going to talk about how we need to keep our businesses really simple, really simple. And I'm actually super excited to talk about this today because a super when we keep things super simple it goes against our logical mind right like we think things need to be complicated and more bells and whistles and more you know options and all of the things and a lot of times that overwhelms your clients and so the actually what studies have shown and proved to be true is that when you keep things more simple, people can understand better what you're doing with your business and your sales will go up. So that's what we're getting ready to talk about. Real quick though, I'm going to read a podcast review from my friend Shirley Ann at Shirley Ann Designs. And it says, wow, Jen, I've been following you for a few months now and something prompted me to dive into you and the advice that you give us women business owners how you have changed my perception, my mindset, my heart, and my desires. Thank you for being so real. Thank you for loving women and teaching us. And thank you for never being ashamed of Jesus and all that he has done. Well, Shirley Ann from Shirley Ann Designs, thank you for your podcast review. And I just pray a blessing on you and your business. And I ask my sweet and loyal podcast listeners, did you know that on most devices, you can like minimize the podcast and you can still like go look things up and you can still be looking at things on your phone. So go look for Shirley Ann Designs and give her her some love on the internet. So we're talking today about keeping things simple. And I'm going to keep this podcast episode super simple. I'm just going to talk to you about a couple of different places, one, two, three, four, five in particular, that you need to keep things super simple and why, okay? Um, Here's the truth, friends. We are smarter than what we've ever been before. We are more connected than what we have ever been before. We have more options than we've ever had before. We have uh, you know, knowledge at our fingertips. Like literally, I can ask Siri how many miles it is from me right now to where I wanna go and I get that in a nanosecond. I can look at an app on a phone right now and see how fast my son is traveling up the interstate in the school bus for a varsity cross country meet that's out of town this weekend. I, could, I have access to knowing how fast he is the vehicle he is in is going. You know what I mean? Like it's mind blowing. The amount of knowledge we have currently at our fingertips. I'm trying to think of what we were looking up last night on the internet with our kids. But you know, we we are always like just Googling the thing, you know, just asking Siri for answers. It is amazing how much knowledge we have at our fingertips. So the flip side of that, because that's like the really cool part about the times that we live in, right? We have the ability to figure stuff out so much quicker. I can help Ava baby do her sixth grade math just by asking Siri to help me with some math problems. Uh, It is amazing what we can figure out. Information is like in overload all around us all the time. So the flip side of that though is, information is all around us at all times. And what that tends to lead us to is complete overwhelm. Because knowing that you have so many options, like does anybody else just go to Netflix and you look at the 5,000 bajillion options for things to watch on Netflix and you end up watching nothing? Why? Because you're overwhelmed. You see all this information and you're like, too much to think about, just checked out. Does anybody else like get irritated when their favorite restaurant changes the menu? There's a restaurant here in Kansas City that the menu used to be pretty simple. And I loved it. It was pretty straightforward. It was, you can get these street tacos, these street tacos, this Mexican corn, this side of rice, and this amazing guacamole with a little margarita. You know, and now they've like expanded their 
menu to where it's like several pages. And I'm like, no, I loved it when it was simple. And the reason we are, especially in the year 2019, super attracted to simple is because we, our mind is in overdrive all the rest of the times. Like having all this information available to me, knowing that I can right now on my phone, look and see how fast my son is driving. I can see where all of my other kids are at on an app on my phone. I can look at how many steps I've already taken today. I have a Bible reader tracker on my phone. I can look at uh, my husband's Fitbit and see how well he slept last night. Like we have so much available to us that it's just completely overwhelming. And so that's why we'll go to Netflix and we'll be like, there's a million things and you just get exhausted at all the options. You're like, it's too much to think about. It's too much to try to figure out. I'm just out. This is why when your favorite restaurant changes their menu and now it's more complicated, it's actually frustrating, right? Because now it requires you to think. And all you do all day is think. You think at your business. You think at your job. You think of, you know, all the different ways you can be a better wife, mother, friend, Christian, you're, you're, most of us, it's not like most of us are never thinking. Most of us are thinking all the time. And so I want to talk today to you business owners to try to help you see why you have to keep things so simple in your business because the minds of your client are being inundated with information overload all day long. And if you, my friend, do not keep things seriously simple for them, you will lose them as customers. Okay. So let me give you a few examples. All right. Um, let's talk real quick about your elevator pitch. So your elevator pitch is the thing that if I'm going to run into an elevator today and I go, oh, hey girl, what is it that you do? You're going to be like, oh, thanks, Jennifer, for helping me start a business. You know, your inner circle coaching has been great. And I'm like, excellent. What, tell me what you do. And if you start in on this, you know, 60 second spiel of, well, I kind of like sort of do this. And then on occasion, I'll also X, Y, Z. Um, but I also blah, 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 like instantly my eyes are glazing over. And I know it's one thing to tell like your business coach, you know, what it is you do. But what about if you go out to dinner this weekend and you meet some people that you've never met before? So if I'm at a table and people have never met me before, I have literally been at a table before where people say, Jennifer, what do you do? And somebody else answers for me. And I notice sometimes it's hard for them to answer. Like I've heard Mr. Magic say before, well, she has an online business and you know she has a lot of followers and so people pay her to talk about their products and then she teaches people you know, how to do the internet and then it's kind of like a long thing. And I've realized I can see people's eyes glazing over. And so I have figured out that I have to tell people, Jennifer, what is it that you do? I teach women in particular how to use social media to build their business online and how to make money in several different ways in the online space. Like that I feel like is super simple. I teach women how to make money online with using social media and by multiple revenue streams. There you go. Bada boom, bada bing. So I'm curious if you know what your elevator pitch is. Even the other day, because I on my in my inner circle where I do coach women, uh, we have, you know, well over 2,500 entrepreneurs in there. And the other day I was asking somebody, what is it that you do? And she started down the, well, um, most of what I do is, and it took her about, I would say 30 to 45 seconds to get it out. And in love, I said to her, girl, you got to work on that. You got to be able to tell me in like five to seven seconds what it is that you do. Because people's minds are busy. And unless things are kept super simple, they are nodding in all the right places, but you lost them at the five to seven, seven second mark. How many of you know what I'm talking about? When you are in conversation with somebody who is, um, they really love to tell stories and maybe their stories are super interesting to them, but they're not super interesting to you. And so what you find yourself doing is you appear that you're listening and you're nodding your head in all the appropriate spots, but you checked out a long time ago, sir. You know what I'm talking about? Like you, you're like, I, I, I'm nodding in all the appropriate spots. I'm laughing in the appropriate spots, but I have no idea what this person is saying. You know what I'm talking about? Why? Because it goes on and on. So your elevator pitch has got to be so stinking short. I teach creative women how to use social media to grow their business online and make multiple revenue streams. 
Do I also promote some products? Yep. Do I also promote some courses? I do. Do I also have an event? I sure do. Do I also um, have a you know course once a year um, that we launch? I absolutely do. Do I have a podcast? Yep, I do. But when people ask me what I do, I don't need to go into all of the things. I need to go into the one thing. I need you to figure out what your one thing is. Now, creative people, listen to me. When I say this, I know you're already breaking out in hives. And it's like you're, you may be sitting down on the inside, but you're standing up on the inside because you, you feel irritated that I'm trying to make you hone in on the one thing. And you're like, but, 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 I get you, but, but, but. I know that you can decorate and you can paint and you can rearrange furniture and you can do color consults and you can stand on your head and paint a buffet with your eyes closed. I get it. You are multi-talented. I so get it. But when you are talking to other people about your talents, you better figure out the one thing that you most want them to know that you do. And over time, they may figure out all the other things or you may clue them on the other things. But your elevator pitch needs to be super simple. You got to keep it simple, stupid. I'm not calling you stupid, by the way. But you got to keep it simple. We have simple brains. We know more than we ever have before, but you got to keep it super simple. Um, I had somebody tell me once, this is the second point. Whenever you're going to offer something for sale, now that could be the really cute orange shirt that I have on that is one of Sarah Jakes Roberts' um, pieces of clothing in her boutique. I wish you could see it. It is just the cat's meow. It's the bee's knees. It's all that and a bag of chips. So thank you, Sarah, for the cute shirt. Um, but let's say I have a boutique even. It still applies to that. You've got to make it so simple. That don't be putting the shirt with a hat and a pair of shoes and a necklace and they can either get the shirt by itself or they can get the whole outfit and a thing and you can take out this pair of shoes and you can put in this pair of shoes and it's just too chaotic for people. Listen, our minds are chaotic, friends. We have lots going on up in there, especially if your client is a woman. Oh, for the love, keep it simple for her. Keep it simple for her. So what I heard somebody say once is that your offer needs to be so easy that even your grandparents could understand it. Okay, let me give you some more examples. I'll use myself as an example. My inner circle is my monthly coaching group for women where I teach them how to use social media to get more followers, which is at some point gonna get them more sales. That is super simple. We have this group that I started for creative women. Now, is it for other women? Yes. Can anybody join? Yes. Can even men join? Yes. But you've got to keep it so simple on the offer. The offer has to be super simple. I help women grow their social media following so they can eventually make more money. Bada boom, bada bing. In January, we'll have my creator's roadmap course. Now that you've got followers, I help you figure out seven different ways to make money online from your followers. That is so easy. That is so easy. I need you to figure out what your easy thing is that even your grandparents could get it. You have an earring of the month club. Bada boom, bada bing. I get that. I send people earrings once a month in a box. That's super simple. Please don't overcomplicate your offers. If people can't even really figure out what your course is about, then you need to somehow figure out the fifth to seventh grade terminology that would make sense to anybody reading it. That, that brings me to my next point. Anytime you write a blog post, an email, a Facebook post, you need to write as if a fifth to seventh grader is going to be reading it. Why? Well, because all your like extra big fluffy words and the way you structure your sentences and the, all the things and the big you know, ideas, it's all, it's all great. And it may make you feel really good about yourself, but if a fifth to seventh grader can't figure it out, they're not going to engage on that. If they can't figure out what the heck you're talking about in that email, if it's not spaced in a way that my sixth grade daughter, Ava Grace, could read it well, then you've got to dumb it way down. And I know what you're thinking, but my vocabulary is way bigger. Well, that's awesome, but you're not your client. but I want to give lots of context. You don't need to. The simpler you can be, the fewer words you can be, the better. In fact, when it comes to email, I need you to pay real close attention to just bold headings and a lot of white space. Because what happens to everybody in an email? Open up an email and it says, hey, Jen, and I'm thinking, hey, girl. Scan, 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 scan. 
Am I right or am I right? Do, do you scan or do you read every word of the emails that come to you? No, you scan. You scan. We are, our minds are so busy that we have now trained ourselves just to look for the big ideas, the fantastic pictures with a price, the link that's super easy to go to, the email that has zero fluff inside of it and just one big idea with one link. Like those are easy to consume. Please, especially you people who love creativity. Look, I know I do too. We are working so hard to like currently get the open rate of our emails higher and it's required that we take a lot of the beautiful things out of our emails and it's hurting my soul. I need you to know that. I'm like, we have gone from beautiful emails to just ugly, bland, common. And guess what? Our email open rate has went up. When you take out a lot of the fluff and you keep it simple, stupid, it's amazing that people are able to better wrap their head around what it is you do, what it is your offer it is, what it is that you're asking them to do, what it is that you're selling, and you will make more money. Another thing that needs to be super easy is your checkout page. Is your checkout page. Listen, if you have a product that people are going to buy one time, so not a membership site, but a product. I am going to encourage the heck out of you to allow PayPal to be one of your payment options. And I'm going to tell you why. How many of you will be on your phone late at night and you'll be laying next to your spouse and you know darn good and well you should be paying attention to them, but you're just perusing the Facebooks and you see the cutest shirt and you're like, dang, I need that shirt. And of course you don't need that shirt, but you go past the picture and you're like, man, I'm still thinking about that shirt. So you reverse that bus, you go back up to the shirt and it's a sponsored Facebook post. And you're like, I am so glad I've never heard of this boutique, but that is stinking cute. So you go ahead and click on it. You go to the boutique and you start the checkout process. And again, it's 11 o'clock at night. Everybody's, you know, house is finally quiet. Husband's wishing you'd pay attention to him, but you're shopping on Facebook. Maybe it's just me. Anywho, you start the checkout process and you realize, okay, they don't offer PayPal. Crap. Now you've got me in a conundrum because here's what happens. The purse with the wallet with the debit card in it is in a whole nother room of the house and I'm in bed. And now I'm left with wondering how bad do I really want that shirt? Because since PayPal is not an option, which is a really easy checkout, you make it really easy on the client. Now I've got to, I've got to sit here and figure out and put myself through the mental, do I really want it? Do I want it bad enough to get up out of this bed, which is going to disrupt the dogs, which is going to, you know, then I got to flip on the lights, go down the hall. Like, do I want it that bad? Nah, nah, I probably don't need to spend the money. This is probably God's way of showing me I don't need to spend the money. And I will get off that checkout page 90% of the time. How many of you know exactly what I'm talking about? You know exactly what I'm talking about. If you have got a product that people can buy for one time, please add PayPal as an option for lazy shoppers like me. This is a great time for you to share this podcast episode with somebody who know who owns a brick and mortar or who has an online store. Please share this right now. Tell them to go to the 17 mark point when Jen starts talking about checkout pages. You got to offer something like PayPal. That is so easy. I mean, I know there's some other options now too with like Amazon Pay or who knows what it is. I just go to PayPal every time. Why? Because I can put in my PayPal and my password and bada boom, bada bing, it's done. But if you're going to ask me to get up out of my really warm and cozy brand new navy blue sheets that we just put on the bed. And you're going to ask me to waddle down the hallway and go get my purse and go get my wallet. And it's six in the morning or it's 11 o'clock at night. It isn't going to happen. It's just not going to happen. I'm going to back out of that transaction every day of the week. You've got to make it so easy for people to spend money with you. You've got to make it so easy. Now, listen, we do not do PayPal at all for our recurring charges. PayPal is a hot freaking mess when it comes to recurring charges. So we don't do that. I'm hoping that somebody will make up something real easier that PayPal will listen to this and they'll be like, Jen, we got you. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix that mess. That's going to be easier. And that would make Jen a happy, happy girl. But until then, <laughs> I'm telling you, if you have things that are a one-time payment option, please keep your checkout process so stinking easy. Last example I'm going to give you, and this is for people who do have a membership group. So 
inside of my inner circle, which I've had now for many years, we have got over 2,500 business owners that are in there every month learning how to get more social media followers, right? And you can go back and listen to one of my recent podcasts about why the number of followers you have matters. I know there's lots of people out there who say they don't matter. And in my opinion, that's not true. They absolutely 100% matter. And so um, go listen to that. But here's what I know to be true. That inside of my monthly group, I instinctively will think if people start quitting, and oh, by the way, they quit every single month, we have about 96% retention rate, so 4% of my people are leaving every month. And instinctively, I will start to think, well, why are they leaving? I didn't teach them enough. I need to give them more things. Let's give them another Thursday night. Um, training instead of a Wednesday morning. Let's give them another, um, you know, how to do the fourth quarter bonus. Let's give them another, bring in an expert on taxes since we're nearing the end of the year. Like instinctively, my brain starts going to what else can I give them? And the truth is we survey our people as they leave the inner circle. And I would say 60 to 70% of the reason of the people who leave, the reason that they leave is that they are overwhelmed so they haven't been or slash haven't been using the information because it goes back to that Netflix thing that when I look at all the options, I'm like, it's too hard to think. I don't even know where to start with this. I don't even know. I, I don't, I don't want to go through 5 million movies and watch a trailer before I figure out the one I want. It's just easier to watch the news, <laughs> which by the way, I don't do. But I think sometimes that's what happens inside of our Facebook groups and our courses and our membership groups. We keep thinking that we need to give people more and the truth is people want less. They want less. They've already got way too much to do because when people start feeling behind is when they start bailing because they're like, now I'm two months behind on content. There's no way I can catch up. I might as well just quit paying for this. So I want you to really, really look at the areas of your business that you could really simplify. Can you simplify your bio on Instagram? Yeah, it's cute that you say, you know, you love to eat raw chocolate chip cookie dough. That's lovely. But I don't know if that's helping you get any more clients. Can you simplify the link in your bio? What can you simplify? What can you do to keep things more simple? What could you do today to make it so that your grandparents or your sixth grader can understand and read it. So are you familiar, by the way, with Donald Miller? So Donald Miller is the, um, the person that does the story brand podcast. He has also like, I think a in real life, um, course and, um, he's a speaker and got a book on story brand. So I totally offended Donald Miller on Instagram the other day, offended him. Donald, if you're listening to this podcast, which I doubt it, but I just would love to say again publicly, so sorry. Um, a friend of mine was telling me about how good Donald's book, A Thousand Miles in a Thousand Years is. And I was like, really? I, I haven't read that. And they were like, you've got to get it. So I ordered the book and, um, and I was doing a little Instagram story and showing people that I was sitting in front of the window and I was reading this book that my friend Jonathan said I had to read. And then I like opened it to the front cover of the book and it said that the date on it was 1971. And so then I say on my Instagram story, wait a second, this book was wrote in 1971. That was the year I was born. And then I said something really bad, like, Donald, were you like 10 when you wrote this book? Like, I don't think you're that much older than me. What were you like 10? And then I realized because a couple of people messaged me, no, 1971 is the year he too was born. And I'm like, oh crap. Oh crap. So yeah, we've been trying to get Donald Miller on my podcast here for a hot minute. I'm guessing now that I've offended him, that that may be a long shot. But my whole point of this is I tell all the people who come through my inner circle, go do some research on Donald Miller and what he tries to teach people. If you go to storybrand.com, he used to have this great freebie. Donald doesn't even know me or know that I'm even talking about this, by the way. But he used to have this great freebie on um, how to keep everything super simple when people hit your website. So essentially, he says when people hit your website, so if you go to jenniferallwood.com, which by the way, in 
at any minute is going to be brand spanking new. So please go take a look. By the time this podcast comes out, the new site should be up. So if people go to your website, it needs to be so ridiculously clear in like three to five seconds. I think he calls this the grunt test of what it is that you do, that there's zero room for confusion. Because what he always says is if you confuse, you lose. And that is just so stinking true. I love that. It's so deep. It's so true. And so I really believe, friends, that you have that same opportunity when you're writing a Facebook post, when you are crafting an email, when you are making an offer about your new, you know, decorating group that is on Facebook, you've got to keep everything so simple so that it's so easy for people to understand. So it takes them zero amount of time to think about what this is, now what is she saying, now what does she do, now what is she offering, now what is this? Nobody wants to think. If you're a business owner, I need you to understand that nobody wants to think, okay? And this is why I also suggest that you get really consistent business hours, that you're not open like 10 to 4 one day, um, 11 to 7 the next day, closed on Tuesday mornings on any month that ends in a Y, and then open every Saturday, but every other Sunday you're closed. Like it's too much for people and you're losing them. So dumb it down to that fifth to seventh grade level. Dumb it down so even your grandparents can get it, and you're going to see so much more success. So I hope that this was super helpful for somebody here on the podcast today because it was fun for me to talk about. Thanks for being here, friends. I'm always seriously so honored by you listening. Please forward this podcast on to some other business owner who you know maybe a little unclear about what it is that they do or they have a brick and mortar and they really need to, or some online sales, they really need to simplify their checkout process. So love y'all. Talk soon. Till next week, stay creative. Bye-bye.